All right, this is Aaron, and I'm going to uh, talk about the door on the Sienna and the door speakers. This is uh, going ahead and uh, removed all the door panel. And what I've done is you can see this is the factory speaker connector. It has the purple and pink wiring. This is the uh, factory hole. This wiring kind of traces up on in here through the door and then terminates down into this block on the driver's side kick panel. So what we first had to do was pop off this trim pieces. This just pulls up and out. The kick panel has a little thumb screw that you unscrew right there. And then this just pops back and out. And you can see there's two rivets there. So just a quick pull and it comes right off nicely. So the door speaker has those pink and purple wires. So that comes down into this loom right here. Here's your pink and purple wire. And that goes into this, uh, this body connector right here that I'm going to pop off and you can see. So here are your, your pink and purple. And I ran continuity tests to make sure that yes, these two wires right here are the same as this door speaker. So what happens somewhere up in this dash, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure I haven't been able to find it because you know, the wiring harnesses all tree together and everything makes a mess. The pink and purple get paralleled off into the dash speaker way up here. And you can see it at way underneath. I, I'm not gonna be able to reach it with the camera. You're just gonna have to trust me that that's what happens. So um, when I hook up my my new amp here, this this kicker key amp, this is the key 200. So it's got the built-in DSP and all that. Um, what I wanna do is run this in bi -amp mode. So what that means is that the top two speakers and the door speakers are basically they're all separate channels, right? You have one input, one left and right input, but then two separate outputs. So that way um, the amplifier will be configured to set those as kind of like a higher, uh, they have the carry the higher, the mid range and up to the highs. And then these will just be configured to carry the lows to the kind of probably, I think it's around like the three to 600 Hertz region. The, the amp does its own setup, but it crosses, you cross it over um, however you want, like the, we're going to cross it down at 60. So that way it doesn't play below 60. And then the amp will automatically set it up. And when you have it, when you have it configured in bi -amp mode, which is what you do with these, these dip switches, and it will go ahead and automatically set the crossovers. I think it's the, the upper speakers are going to carry 300 Hertz on up. And then I think this sets up, uh, somewhere you know, it'll be that lower part of 60 up to I think it's 600 Hertz or so they kind of have an overlap just way there's a little bit more mid coming through here but uh, yeah so basically the problem is the factory deck is just outputting one set of outputs these two are in parallel so basically they carry the full they both full range speakers right which these don't have any crossover on them and those have a high pass or I guess, yeah, it's high pass crossover. So it's just letting through everything above a certain frequency. So these are playing the full range and they sound awful. We don't want that to happen. So what we're gonna have to do is, I know this is not gonna be comfortable for most people. They don't, I haven't been able to find a connector for this. And honestly, it's not too big of a deal. I'm just gonna go ahead and just snip these right here. And then I'm gonna crimp some, uh, some connectors like spade connectors on there that way if i ever need to revert to factory i just go pop pop them back together um you could also do it with a wire crimp you know you could just crimp them back together if you need to but once we cut these what we'll do is we'll cut these two right here um you know going out and we can take this output or this this one that goes into the door this is going to go to the to the out of that amp so that'll come to the out for the left Basically that's gonna feed the door. And then up at the head unit, we're going to tap in. I'll show you out later, we're gonna have a T harness and we're just gonna feed the output right to there for the other speaker. So it'll just go up into that, you know, into the dash wiring somewhere. So the signal is still gonna come down and you know, wanna come out of these two wires here, but when, once they're clipped, it's not, they're not gonna be you know, plain because then we're gonna go ahead and use those other two, that, that other second pair. But I'll show that as we do it. Um, that way there's no confusion. But they, I'm gonna check the passenger side, but I have a feeling it's the same way. So it should be. And uh, once that, once I check that out, then we should be good to go to start this installation procedure. Um, also, while I'm under here, there is a fuse block. 
and yeah it's too dark i don't have a light on this sucker but there's the fuse block under there i'm going to show how we're going to connect this amp up right underneath there using the factory fuse block so we don't have to run any wires anywhere all right well thanks for watching okay aaron back here again with the 2021 sienna stereo install and i'm on the passenger side and i've done this before but i want to show you guys how to take off this uh trim pieces here that way we can you know do some sleuthing behind here and see if we can find the the body body harness that feeds these speakers so first off you can't see it too well but well there it is there's that screw you can use a screwdriver or you can just twist it right with your thumb it just pops off nice thing about this car is lots of storage so let's put it somewhere good so this we can just take our trim panel tool kind of this is gonna be harder for me to do because, but yeah, once we just kind of loosen it like this, we can grab it and just pull. So let's, let's go ahead and see this pull out here. There we go. Pop, pop, pop. And then this kind of pulls and pops. And you can see where it engages, right? These are the, the little orange clips. Not very many places. Really easy to take that thing out. So this one's a little bit more stubborn, but still not bad. So I just kind of reach my hand up under this that tab right here kind of pop it off of that little stud that's on and what i do is just kind of grab pull pull out towards you i know it made a violent sound but it's fine these these clips are engaged they're still good um these are easy to find on amazon should you break one okay so what do we have here okay some more harnesses good so what we want to find is the speaker harness and it's not going to be a very big one it's a small one there's a lot of harnesses in here but i'm guessing it's this guy right here so i'm gonna pop him out and take a look because usually these don't have very many they're pretty small harnesses right so then we have some different colors There's a blue and a green. And I believe, I'll have to double check because I don't have my service uh, schematics in front of me, but pretty certain that that blue and the green are the uh, passenger side door speaker. And then this guy should be going up and I can't, you know, without taking the glove box out on this side, it's gonna be hard to see where it goes. So I'm gonna have to do that in another video, but most likely, this guy is going out to our door. So this is also, I'm gonna most likely gonna have to clip those two right there, those uh, the blue and the green. And then that's gonna go to the right side of the uh, amplifier output for the door woofers. And then the right side for the dash woofers is gonna be just like the left side in the other video. And that's going to go off the T-harness that we're going to, I'm going to show up next uh, when we get up to that point. Okay, cool. So easy to access. And then running wires should be really simple. I mean, it's just going to be take them, tuck them up underneath here, run them across and kind of drop them down behind the, the stereo up there. And then that should be, you know, this kick. And then the stereo, or not the stereo, but the, this, this kicker key 200 amp is going to go vertically right behind the dash right where the factory unit goes so that's it looking good i think we've got everything we need to start this really shouldn't be too bad to do and it should give us a lot better sound thanks for watching